All right, everybody, welcome back to another video here in the world of Explorer. Today, we're going to be playing an interesting one, Jund Fight Rigging. So this is a three mana enchantment with Hideaway 5, which says you look at the top five cards of your library, exile one of them face down, and the rest go on the bottom in a random order. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Then if you control a creature with power seven or greater, you may play the card without paying its mana cost that you exiled. So this is great with Rotting Regisaur, the little dino boy, which is Topiary Stomper's forever nemesis, in my opinion. Shakedown Heavy, which is also a way to trigger this pretty quickly. We also have some Bone Crusher Giants, some Omnixiluses, uh, Valky, which is great to hit off of the Hideaway because you can play Tobalt Cosmic Imposter, which is insane to get out early. It's also got some Galtas and some Great Henges because of cheap, high power creatures that great with both of these. And then we also have Lanor Elves. This card's amazing in this deck because we can go turn one, Lanor Elves, turn two, Riding Registrar, turn three, Fight Rigging, and get out of Tibalt on turn three. Absolutely gross. Um, for the sideboard, we have four Thoughtseize for the controlling combo, three Fries, and two Shifting Ceratops for the control decks, as well as the Fries against Mono Blue Spirits, two Abrades for any decks where we want to remove some of their creatures, as well as destroy artifacts. Three we Weathered Runestone against the Graveyard decks. One Hidden Sugu consumes all this deck is good against Mono Red, but really good against Cat Oven because it hits their ovens. And then two Shifting Ceratopses, which I believe I already talked about. All right, I am super excited to be playing this deck. I love the idea of getting out big creatures quickly. And with the combo element to it, it's got a little bit of everything that I'm super excited for. Thanks so much for watching. And thank you for Pioneer Explorer with me. All right, we are back with the Jun Fight Rigging deck. I can't keep a one lander even on the draw. This hand is fine though. I'm going to put probably Galta back, unfortunately. Yeah, I think I think it's too high of upside. I'd rather just make sure I can do everything I wanna do. So let's just go turn one, play a little Lovestruck Beast token, my heart's desire. Little bell of the ball. Pass the turn to them. Looks like they might be fatal pushing. Nope, no fatal push. All right, so Rakdos. I feel like we've seen this before. I feel like we've seen a Rakdos deck somewhere. I can't really remember. All right, stomping ground. Unfortunately, you're going to deal us three damage instead of two. Feels bad, man. But we're just going to go tap stomping ground. Slay for one. Pass the turn to them. And then we're just going to probably go, like, Rotting Registrar into Shakedown Heavy, depending on what we draw. So that's going to be pretty good. Yeah, Graveyard Trespasser's fine. You're going to have to stop killing some stuff, though. All right, Lanor Elves. Interesting. I'm going to pay two life. I think I'm just going to start with the Shakedown Heavy, actually. Pass the turn to them. I'm definitely not attacking. And then let's see what they've got. They probably have a way to kill Shakedown Heavy in their deck, whether it's Heartless Act or Sack something to, and then Fatal Push, but I think that's fine if they kill it, because then we could go like Rotting Regisaur and Lanor Elves, or depending on what we draw. Bone Crush, that guy is also fine and dandy, but let's see what else they have. Tap Land Pass, all right, that's good. Ooh, Galta. So then I want to just go tap Overgrown Tomb, a little Reginald. And then I think I want to just go to combat. And they can either take six or let me draw a card. They're definitely going to take six here. Or they can chump, but I can't imagine. They're most likely just going to take six. Yep. Pass the turn to them. See what else they've got going on. They don't have a way to get out Croaks up. Boma Courier, interesting. That's gonna come up later, I'm sure. Bone Crusher Giant is also good. They get to get in there for some damages. All right, and then we're gonna discard the Lanor Elves. To no one's surprise. Dang. That makes me sad. I still think we have to go with Galta here. I just don't think there's a world where Galta's better than a fight rigging. Because what if this just completely whips and we have to, we get nothing out of it. All right, let's just slay for an absolute chunk of damage. They don't even have good blocks with this. And it's going to be pretty gross. Like, they can let me draw a card and then I get to keep my fight rigging. This is, yeah, this is pretty great. Or I could draw land. Yeah, they didn't want to let me draw. That's fine. 
And then what are they going to do? Just block there and there? And block there. This is all perfect. Because I still get to keep my Reginald. I get to pass the turn to them. No matter what, I get to play a Love Struck Beast. Yeah, oh, now I get to keep a Fight Rigging. Thanks, dude. What a good friend. Oh, thanks, Kiss the Gigabyte. KSP Gigabyte? Kiss. All right, so they still have... All right, so they get to mill. What? Glory Banger? Interesting. Well, if they weren't super dead this turn, I would think they have some decent mid and late game, but they are... Okay. Okay, okay. They get to go to one by playing the Beaumont Courier. That's awesome. I like that a lot. That's funny. Oh, you don't want to attack there, pal? <laughs> oh, no way. What a baller move. I'm going to block. And you get to sack it and draw a card. All right. What are you going to draw? Nothing that's going to save you, unfortunately, my friend. I'm going to fight rigging. Let's do it. Fight rigging up Galta. And there we go. Let's go. Let's see what we want to sideboard against this Rakdos deck. Weathered runestones come in against the annoying what's her tits. And then I think a couple of braids are going to be nice. And I think that's it, eh? Let's drop down one bulky, one Reginald, one Obnixilis, two Lovestruck Beasts. That's good. All right, here we are in game number two. I don't think we can, we can keep that hand. This hand I shall keep. I'm going to put Belky on the bottom. I'd rather have Stomp in a, in a vacuum because this is like a two for one. And then we're just going to go tapped. Probably Overgrown Tomb. Pass the turn. And then we're just going to go Seer Step Pathway. Kroxa, that's fine. What is Kroxa getting rid of, though? Unfortunately, probably Galta. I just want to be able to combo off and keeping a Bone Crusher available for a removal spell on what they play here is going to be pretty nice. So let's see what they do. They have three mana and Graveyard Trespasser. Well, unfortunately, I'm not going to not going to do that one, but that's OK. And then I'm just going to pay two life and play the Reginald. And I like our position still because they have one turn to kill Reginald before fight rigging starts to do some seriously gross work. And man, Great Henge with Ra Reginald is so gross. All right, take my fight rigging. That was a pretty good draw. You can't take anything else. Nothing else will work for you to take. Sorry, friend. Unless you have two thought seizes. But maybe they're worried about the Great Henge, but realistically, I don't even have the green mana to play it. So it's just fight rigging. It's just not even close to being close. But they are deciding what they want to get rid of. Wow, they must have another... They might just have a removal spell or something, but... If they don't, taking fight rigging there is uh, questionable. Wow, they are... That was... What? All right. Bone Crusher? No more. Fight rigging it is. I am so confused. They did not. Wow. Okay. Now that now I see why they didn't respect the fight rigging. Grody. All right. So let's just go. Probably Lanawar elves here. Yeah. That's unfortunate. That's about as unfortunate as it gets. We get to do this. We get to play Lanawar elves because now we get to make our uh, Galta really cheap. I'm going to slay for eight, though. They can double block if they'd like, and that's fine. Because now we get to just play a tap Blood Crypt, and we're just going to start fire rigging our creatures, and it's going to be pretty good for us. Like, we have to draw something decent, but we have so much time to do it. Yeah, like, Valky's going to be nice. Let's just play a Valky. See what they've got going on. Do they have any creatures for us to steal? Just a bunch of lands. All right. Well, we're going to plus one up the Lanor Elves. Slay for some damage. And then from here, we're just going to pass the turn. And then we can go plus one here. Going to go up to five. 
and this is normally 12 so that would cost us seven mana yeah you can you can hide with the eye tyrant me that's totally fine what are you gonna get rid of right reginald is fine get in there for some damage it doesn't really matter we're winning this race super hard okay so we go to this so we plus one the Valky. and then we go slay for three and this costs seven so four five six four five six so we actually can't play galt of this turn so we just get in there for some more damage play a tapped stomping ground and then next turn we can play a galta like i said i'm fine with them trading all their big scary creatures away we our card on average is so much better than their card on average i'm willing to trade a a galta or a uh reginald for them okay go to here go to combat let's turn our Valky into something a little bit chunkier now i'm not going to attack because i do not want them to have the eye tyrant me instead i'm just gonna play galta and then tap blooming marsh pass the turn to them and i think this is gonna be pretty hard for them to win now beaumont courier is just too strong for us can't stop the beaumont get in there for some damage my friend you do what beaumont's do this late in the game and draw you one card Oh, you didn't even let me block, dude. What if I forgot to block? Sad, sad. All right, what you got for us, dude? You could croak up. That would be pretty good, but I don't think it's going to be nearly enough. Yeah, you croak it. All right, get that out. We're going to lose three life, and that's going to be enough. We did. All right. All right, here we are with the Jun fight rigging deck. I'm going to keep this hand... I can go turn one, uh, Heart's Desire, hold up Stomp for turn two. All right, good. That was a nice draw, because now I don't have to pay two life here. Go ahead and play the Giant, or play Heart's Desire, pass the turn to them. Let's see what they've got. So Boros, maybe the Feather deck, maybe some sort of Jeskai deck. I'm expecting Feather, though. From here, I actually think I'm just going to pay two life slay for one and pass the turn let's see what they do bone crusher giant my heart's desire fair enough fair enough pass the turn to them let's see what else they do they might just play the giant or something here and that would be not ideal for us but fine all right we're gonna stomp one of these knights though history of Benalia. i don't know if you were around when this card was in standard but it's a scary card, so I'm just gonna kill one of the knights. Get a little bit of uh, worth out of my Bone Crusher. All right, here I'm just gonna play Dark Boar Pathway, and I think just a Shakedown Heavy is gonna be pretty nice. Do that, pass the turn. Yep, you can make your other 2 2. And then it looks like they might be playing the Bone Crusher, and that's fine if that's what they wanna do. Yo, look at these sleeves. They make like big ass angel wings. That's crazy. All right, so what are you going to do? Do they have a removal? Aurelia. Beginning of combat on your turn, choose up to one target creature you control. It's plus two and vigilance. Okay, interesting. Very, very interesting. You can make your dude bigger. I guess that doesn't do much. All right, that was an awesome draw. So here, I'm going to just play this on the green side. I'm going to play a fight rigging. I'd love to hit something sick. And that counts play a love struck beast plus one power on this guy make a galta this is what this deck's trying to do slay for seven you can chump if you'd like but that's not going to be too good for you how does this not have reach though that's the real question Ooh another galta is not bad yeah you can have a four three it's going to do not much for you my friend and this fourth state got pretty good pretty fast. Yeah, you can get in there for a four in the air. That's fine. If you're so inclined, you may. All right, Ember Cleave. Give me for 10. Oh, wait, how did I not block this? I must have accidentally clicked through it or something. That's unfortunate. 19. So they can do that, take that damage. 
All right, so I think we have to slay with everything so they can block here and here and take what? Eight, take four, five. Let me draw a card. Dang, the, the, the Ember Cleave is pretty gross, actually. So is there a way that we can get out of this? Doesn't feel like it. Um, no, I don't think so. We're gonna try them. So we're gonna put a plus one counter on the Galta. We're gonna slay. They're for sure gonna let me draw a card here. Yeah. And then they're gonna take, they're gonna block. Oh, okay. What? Oh, they're just dead. Okay, well, that's fine. They really uh, did not anticipate, they really did not um, give any respect to what this deck can do because we're just going to make this happen. And then we're just going to minus this and, you know, kill them. See a nerd? Take seven and draw seven. All right. I'm surprised. Well, we misplayed, then they did not respect what this deck can do. So it worked out great in the end. Here, I'm just going to bring in two of braids for some removal. Um, actually, I think some fries for the Irelia is not going to be bad. So let's bring in three fries. Now nah, let's just bring in two fries. I don't want it to be dead against red cards. And then take out one Shakedown Heavy, because Shakedown Heavy is unfortunate against, you know, people who are trying to be aggressive because they can just let you draw cards. And then drop Lovestruck Beast and Lovestruck Beast. All right, here we are in game number two. I'm going to keep this hand. It's got a Valky on turn two or a Stomp. It's got a lot of good stuff going. So let's just go Stomping Ground tapped, pass the turn. And then we're probably going to go Blooming Marsh. And then depending on what they do, either Valky or Stomp. If they play a creature, we're going to Stomp it. If they don't, we're probably going to Valky it. Because I'd like to be able to stop an Aurelia on turn four. All right, so land. What are they going to do with the land? Robber of the Rich, eh? All right, I'm probably going to stop Robber of the Rich. Hit a land. All right, Blooming Marsh. I'm just going to stop the Robber of the Rich now. I don't really want them to be able to get too many cards off of us, potentially. So let's just be fine with doing that. And then Luminar Gasparin is fine as well. You can make your dude a little bit bigger. All right, at this point, I'm just going to go... Man, I kind of want to just bulky here. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go Overgrown Tomb Tapped and Valky them and just see what we can hit. All right, Aurelia is pretty good. Knowing about Ember Cleave is really nice. And then pass the turn. So they also have a Mirius Call. So that costs seven mana. They do have an Aganjo, so that's important. Put a counter on that guy. That's fine. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. This is all fine and dandy. What I'm thinking about doing is actually just making my dude an Aurelia now. That does seem pretty good. No, because they can just block this super easily if they have Ember Cleave. Zingo 4, 5. I'd rather just play Rotting Regisaur, which makes it much more awkward. So that was... I could have played a Stomping Ground instead, but I, I think this is just fine. All right. They play the Ganjo. That's good to know about. If they attack, I'm definitely blocking with the Rotting Regisaur because they can either Ember Cleave and still trade. Yeah, okay, if that's what they want to do, that's fine and dandy with me. Because we're going to just trade and they don't have many threats outside of this. So, yep, do that. Go to my turn. And then from here, I'm just going to go Bone Crusher Giant. Play a tapped Stomping Ground. Slay for two while I can. Pass the turn to them. All right, this is getting this is getting better now. So we can go five mana for Great Henge. And that won't do much. So I'd probably rather play Galta first. Let's just see what they do. They have six mana. They do have a Den of the Bugbear, but they're not using it here. They might use it defensively, which is pretty funny. All right, so now we can actually go Llanowar Elves, which is going to let us go 
Uh, probably just Timber Crown play Galta now. And that's going to be pretty good. Galta's going to be a pretty thick, thick old blocker to, for them to get through. And while we don't get to get the Great Henge out right away, I don't think there's a way in their deck they can easily... Yeah, that's fine. Like, even if they played Emeria's Call this turn and made a couple 4-4 four, four Angels, I actually don't think that's something that they can still win through. Just because of the fact that my Galt is coming in there for so much damage every turn. That could not have been the play. Unless they have another Emeria's Call, I don't think they wanted to play that. So I'm for sure... Okay... So I'm for sure thinking they have an Amiria's Call in hand as well. Land a creature? All right, well, let's just play a Great Henge. I'm going to play a Tap Stomping Ground, and I am going to slay for a bunch of damage. They can block if they would, are so inclined. If they do, I'm going to let that happen. I'm not going to... Yeah, you can gain some life. I don't care about that. You're going to go to tw 8, past the turn... Gain the two to ten, and now, if they cast an Amiri's Call, I can kill one of the angels. And that'll pretty much cinch this game. Okay, that's fine. You can get in there for some damage, but you can't attach, you can't equip the Ember Cleave. You're one mana short on that. All right, now you can equip Ember Cleave. But that's still only going to do eight, nine damage. I'm going to gain life. I don't know if that, does that matter? And I also get to turn this into a Bulky. Or into an Aurelia. And yeah, I'm just gonna go turn this into Aurelia. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you for turning into an Aurelia. Block. Wait. Nope. Choose blockers. There we go. Go ahead and block. We're gonna take eight. But that's fine, because they're super duper dead. So that worked out great. All right. We fought through some interesting stuff and we are just gonna slay for all the damage get in there with that slay with both of these and then kill them all right that was a good start here we go all right here we are back with the jun fight rigging deck i'm gonna keep this hand it's got all my colors it's got a two drop three drop i think i, I think this is gonna be just fine so let's just go ahead and see what our opponent's up to Start with the Blooming Marsh. Okay, well, they're an Epicure. This could be a few different decks. Well, let's just find out what it is, shall we? Let's play a Bulky, see what we hit off of it. Ooh, Grease Fang combo, eh? I don't love our matchup against Grease Fang, just because of the fact that they get to, uh, we don't have much disruption right away. Out of the board, we get a lot more, but if they just have, like, a way to discard uh, their... If they have, like, a turn three combo, we just lose. Yep, we'll take one. See what they decide to do. Probably nothing here. Yep. Go to our turn. Now, I'm certainly going to play the Rotting Regisaur. And the reason why is Shakedown Heavy has the unfortunate side effect of being able to always be... Um, of always being able to be, like, blocked, if you will, by letting me draw a card. And if you're being aggressive on me, you don't really care if I draw a card anyway, because, you know, drawing a card doesn't matter if I don't get to play the cards. So that's something I have to keep in mind. Here, it, I'm positive they won't be able to combo off, at least, and we can get in there for some damage. So there's a chance that we can just get through their defenses, because here I'm going to play... Okay, Blood Tithe Harvester is fine. And then from here... What do I want to do now? Stitcher Supplier. All right, let's see what they mill. There's the Parhelion. So that's not good. We are pretty much out of time now. So let's just go to our turn. See what we draw. I'm going to discard a Blood Crypt. Fight Rigging would be nice. We have a few options. Ooh, Great Henge. I'm going to play this on the black side. Play a Great Henge. Play Reginald. And then we're actually not dead yet. Because now we get to gain a life and draw a card. And I'm going to slay. 
I'm not going to attack with uh, Valky because Stitcher Supplier is just too good. Yeah, they get to block with Stitcher Supplier. There's not much we can do to stop that. But... Man, it's going to be tough. I don't see us winning this one, but we're going to see. We're going to try. We're going to try. Because they get to just play Grease Fang. Get out their Parhelion. Oh, they paid life. Oh, just to uh, use a blood token at the end of the turn. Yeah, that's fair. So now they get to attack me for 13 down to 7. And have two angels remaining, which is pretty gross. So I don't know exactly how I'm supposed to win this one. I think it's through a ton of luck and a very nice little top. But you know what? We've done it before. We can do it again. Yeah, Riding Registrar doesn't have uh, flying, so... Nothing to worry about there, my friend. Yep, you get to do more damage to me and then discard your Parhelion and of turn to a blood token. And do we have any chance? What can we draw that gives us a shot here? We get to discard both cards in our hand, which is heartbreaking. Discard one there. Discard that. That was not what we wanted to draw. Unfortunately not. So let's just go ahead and go to the next game. And then we bring in three Weathered Runestone. Let's bring in a Hitetsugu Consumes All, a Braids, Thoughtseize, maybe not the Hitetsugu. And then from here, I'm going to take out all the Love Struck Beasts. I think we're going to take out two Obnixiluses. Let's take out three. And then I'm going to take out, maybe we just go down two three bone crushers because bone crushers just aren't very good against them and go up to stick with two Ooh, we can always just bring in some fries as well let's try this it's much more controlling we still have our combo i think this is gonna be pretty good all right here we are in game number two i like this hand it's one three drop creature away from just comboing off on turn two or turn three which is pretty hype so let's just see what we see. They mulligan to six. Our deck becomes so much better against theirs game two. That's one of the big problems with the Grease Fang decks I find now is everyone's so ready for them. Plus Kroxa, plus any old graveyard deck that there's just, it's just hard to win games two and three sometimes. Like you can grind them out, but it is not always very easy. At least that's something I've, I've thought over the over my time here in Explorer. Uh, yeah, let's just exile the reason we put this card in our deck. Perfect. Let's just put a counter on the old Lana War. Blood Tithe Harvester's fine. Get me for one. Yep, that's all fine and dandy. And that's what we wanted to see. So now we get to see exactly what's going to happen. We're going to Shakedown Heavy. We're going to put the Shakedown Heavy. We're going to play a Tybalt Cosmic Imposter. I'm going to not attack you with my Llanowar Elves. I'm going to activate this to exile... Hmm. Probably the Blood Tithe Harvester? Yeah, I kind of like that. Let's exile the Blood Tithe Harvester past the turn. Now we get to play it because Tybalt makes this really nice little emblem when we put him in play. Man, this Tybalt, is he better than the two-mana Tybalt? Yes, yes, very much so. But I will always have fond memories of me and my buddy Austin trying to make the two mana two ball work. It, uh, it never did. It never did. Don't tell anybody. All right, you can make a little devil. You can make me lose a life. I'm certainly going to take some damage here. All right, here I'm just going to... Plus one to exile both cards of our library. Ooh, a thought seize? Mm-mm. I'm just gonna play a crack crown pathway. And then. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm just gonna play. I'm gonna go green, red, green for a Galta. And then I was thinking about maybe holding up a brave, but I think I'm just gonna thought seize them. Show me what you've got. Nothing good. I'm just gonna get rid of your deadly dispute. Make my shakedown heavy nice and chonky. Try to kill your little tibbles. You can let me draw a card if you'd like. That is fine by me. Kind of counterintuitive to the Obnixilis. 
but that's okay. We won't blame our opponent. I get it. They're in a tight position. All right, you can now discard a card with your blood token. Interesting. Stitcher Supplier, eh? All right, they're going to plus one now. I'm going to discard a Crag Ground Pathway. They can gain some life. What else are you going to make me do? Yep, I will take two here. And you can't really attack me too well. That's fine. Take another damage. We do need to start uh, getting onto the board a little bit. So here we're just going to probably... Ooh, fight rigging? Yeah, that's probably going to be pretty good, eh? Let's just play a fight rigging. Let's exile something good. Great Henge would count. I'm going to then plus one here, and they've had enough. Yep. All right, let's go to game three. See, this is more like what the deck's trying to do. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep the board just exactly how it is, because it's amazing against them. All right, here we are in game number three. This hand is... <laughs> it's a hand, but we can't keep it. Oh, perfect. The same hand, but worse. Unfortunately, we are going to have to keep this one. I'm going to put Galto away. I don't love it, but at least this gets to stop them from comboing off anytime soon. But, yeah, you get to see my shame. Don't look at my shame. No! Uh, what are you going to take? Thoughtseize, probably? Probably Thoughtseize. I'm guessing Thoughtseize. Shakedown Heavy was not the guess I was going to make. Show me what you got with my Thoughtseize, shall we? Goodbye, Obnixilis. You mean nothing! All right. Ooh. Um, I'm going to play this dude tapped and thought seize them again. See what they've got. All right, bunch of lands, and that's it. So we're kind of in the same boat in that they need to draw lands, and I need to draw non-lands. Well, this is all kind of awkward, isn't it? All right, I'm just going to play a bulky, see what they got. What you got? Another land. All right. See, they're drawing lands when they don't need to. I'm drawing green-black lands when I don't want to. Green-black lands are actually the worst draws in the entire deck because they don't let us play Fry, and they aren't creatures or anything else that we can cast. Reginald is fine and dandy, though. So let's just play Reginald. Attack for Dose. We're going to discard Fry to the Reginald this turn as my guess. And then play Runestone, depending on what we draw. This is kind of a funny game three. It's not... <laughs> we're kind of just like... We're kind of like, you know, the episode from Monty Python where they're just throwing insults at you at each other from like the wall. That's kind of what it feels like. But unfortunately, our insults come with a giant zombie dinosaur that is going to really just insult the loving crap out of them. So... Yeah, that worked out. All right, here we are with the fight rigging deck. I'm not going to keep a one lander. This hand is good. I will keep this. It needs a fight rigging, but we can always draw that. I'm going to get rid of a land or elves. I am going to play. I like Slitherbore, the name of it better than Timber Crown. So we're just going to play Slithy. I mean, look at this pathway. That's wild. All right, portable hole. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do all your dumb stuff. That's fine. Play a tapped overgrown tomb. I'm going to play a love struck beast creature. Pass the turn to you. See what you got. Ant, eh? Okay. Go red. I think I'd rather. No, I'm going to play a shakedown heavy. See what they do. Dwar disruption. Oh, growth spiral is fine. That is fine. And then I'm going to get in for one. And Shakedown Heavy is nice because it's hard for them to... If they have to... I mean, they can always remove it, but if they want to not take damage from it, I have to draw cards unless they have a kill spell. All right. Now I'm a little bit worried about Wandering Emperor. So I'm just going to start by slaying for seven. See what they decide to do. Yeah, I had a feeling... All right, they can minus it. I will kill the Wandering Emperor with Bone Crusher Giant, I think, here. Oh, actually, I might just go ahead and let that be the case. They take one, because I'm assuming they're going to plus it. 
No, I think I need to kill it while I can. No, I'm just gonna play the Love Struck Beast and pass. See what they decide to do now. We have five mana. Doomscar. Jeez, oh, beats. This is gross. Plus, oh, they minus it? All right, all right. I'm just gonna go. Uh, black side here. Minus to this guy. And then play Bone Crusher Giant and pass the turn. Let's see what else they've got going on. So they have, they have six mana now. All right, I am just going to go to combat, slay for four, and see what they decide to do here. So Shark Typhoon for a 3-3 Shark is fine if they want to trade. I am content with this. I'm going to play a Shakedown Heavy and pass. If we could be able to resolve this fight rigging, that'd be insane, though it might be difficult. Because they have six mana now. Maybe they're going to put Yorian into hand, but that doesn't seem that good. They might not have a ton going on. Oh, they didn't play a land. I actually don't like that. I'm going to go black, red, green. Oh, wait. Whoops. Black, green, green. Play Great Henge. See what they do. I can't imagine this resolves. All right, it does. That means I'm assuming fight rigging resolves as well, then. All right. Do we just need to not whiff here? Of Nixilis, eh? That's not a whiff. I'm going to get an Obnixilis. I'm going to put a counter on my Shakedown Heavy. And the question is, yeah, I think I'm just going to casualty it. Unfortunately, we don't get to attack with Shakedown Heavy, but I get two big old Nixiluses. And that's fine. I'm going to minus the seven one on myself and draw a card. I don't want them to be able to like fateful, uh full absence it and make it so that I can't draw cards. So I'm just going to get the cards while they're getting the cards is good. Woo wee. All right. Now I'm going to with this one. I think just start draining them at least for this with this trigger on it. I'm going to play a tap stomping grounds and pass the turn. And this is where stuff gets kind of gross. Because we just refilled our whole hand to fairy hero of Dominaria. Whatever, dude. I'm not worried about that. You can minus three and I'm going to kill it with a stomp. Yeah, this this is going to be. See, this is what we like. Hooey. A doom scar, eh? All right. I respect that. I am going to stomp Arino, your Teferi. Goodbye. And then play a. Go black. Green, green. Play a rotting Reggie. Put a counter on it, draw a card. And then here I'm just gonna play it. Hmm. Just play a tapped overgrown tomb. Go to combat, put a counter on this, and then just play another up Nixilis. Sacrifice the rotting Regisaur. This is disgusting, by the way. Because now I get to go plus one. And then they either discard or lose two life. Plus one again. They lose the life or discard a card. And I don't know how in the heck they survive now. I've got a Omnixus on 10, one on four. Yeah, you can play Yorian. Whatever, dude. That's all fine and dandy with me. You can... What? You can't even Doomscar here for much value? Yeah. All right. You get an Omen of the Sea. Omen of the Sea is fine. And from here, like, we just have so many options. Gross, by the way. This one is a non-legendary Planeswalker. I think we're going to do it too. I think we're going to do the dang thing. This is something I've always dreamed about doing. And I think it's time. I think it's time. We're going to do this together, guys. This is what I mean when I say we're exploring Pioneer together. Because we are going to play another of Nixilis. Casualtying it. Sacrificing the Shakedown Heavy. 
we are going to have at one point four Obnixiluses out, and that is too much. They didn't even let us do it. Come on, Wandering Murloc. Oh, all right. Go to con go to sideboard. Bring in all this good stuff. Bring in shifting series. Uh, what do we bring out? Love struck beasts feel medium. Love struck beasts kind of feel medium in this deck as it is, honestly. I don't know how I feel about them. Bone Crusher Giants great against their Planeswalkers. Um, Llanowar Elves, they might actually be apt to take out their stuff for Llanowar Elves, their portable holes, just because Llanowar Elves the only hit. We shall have to see. Let's drop down... Hmm, this is tough, actually. Maybe go down to... Go down on one fry. And then... Ooh. Maybe we actually just take out Llanowar Elves. And bring in... Bring back in the fry. I actually think that's going to be good. All right, here we are in game two. Unfortunately, the Shuffler is not in love with us today. Wow, the Shuffler's really not in love with us today. Um, I don't see how we're going to win this one, but we're going to try. Turns out mulling down this far against a control deck is going to make it pretty difficult, but maybe they have seven lands in hand or something. But that's okay. Sometimes that's just how it be. It be how it be, as they say. I'm just going to Valky them, see what they've got going on. I don't think it's going to do much in terms of taking creatures out of their hand, but it does tell me what they've got. Actually, they don't have too much. They can go like Overgrown. Yeah, Portable Hole that. That's fine. That's fine. I'm just going to play a Blooming Marsh, play a Rotting Regisaur, see if they... I'm sure they're going to that Faithful Absence it at the end of the turn. But that's fine. Oh, they didn't want to. Okay, okay, okay. They're probably just going to do it on my upkeep in response to the discard trigger, is my guess. But they lose out on some mana, so I'm not too upset by that. All right, so they're going to... Yep, they're just going to... Oh, they're going to Odawara it? Um... Probably just discard Forest. I'm just gonna replay the Rotting Regisaur. Ooh, actually, Fry's not bad, because now I can Fry the Teferi if I need to. Interesting, because they can go Land Teferi, plus the Teferi Faithful Absence Rotting Regisaur. All of this is annoying, but stuff we can survive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna fry your stupid Teferi. Whew, this is not going great. Teferi dies, Rotting Regisaur dies. I think I have to discard Fight Rigging here. Heartbreakingly. I just think we need to try to, ugh. Just thought, thought sees them. Get out Teferi. This is tough. I mean, they don't have too much. They can, like, put that into their hand, and that's the best they can do right now. But they can always march of otherworldly light my Rotting Regisaur. They can't march this, uh, or they can't... They can't deal with this as easily. Like, they can march it, but they can't do it in response to a discard trigger, so that's super nice. Let's see what they decide to do. They have beside you. I would love it if they beside you with this clue token. I could use another land. March, yeah, you're probably just gonna march my Shakedown Heavy, yup. Man, I cannot believe we're fighting in this game, though. I mean, we're not fighting super, super well. Ugh, if we play this, we have to discard our stinking Galta. Yeah, I mean, we have to. There's no world where we don't do that. I guess we can, on upkeep, sack the clue? And draw a card and then I guess it would be in response to the trigger anyway so we don't need to set a stop yeah I think that's gonna be a good idea hateful absence eh I'm just gonna well in that case Galt is nowhere near getting played I can't have they drew the freaking faithful absence super rude <laughs> great henge great precisely what we want land wouldn't be the worst obviously we don't want to land too much play an overgrown tomb draw again with the clue see what we get 
what do we even want? Just like, well, not that, but pass the turn to them. Oh, we tried really hard to stay in this, but now it's getting hard. They can play Yorian. There's no real value from this Yorian though. So that's always a feels good when they play Yorian for zero value. Not what we wanted to draw. Let's just play Blo Blooming Marsh and pass. Now they're just getting chances to draw with us having no threats. And they get to Castle Vantress at some point. Ugh, come on. Enters tap, pass the turn to them. They get to scry. Ooh, Wandering Emperor is good. Three, six. Next turn we can play Great Henge and gain two life, and that's about it. And that does very little. Especially if they minus it again. We would need to draw something pretty good. Bob Nixilis. Does that do anything? I don't think so. I think our only hope is to... I mean, we have to do it, but I just don't think it's going to do enough. Yeah, growth spiral in response. And then what you got? I'm just going to minus one and pass. Yeah, I'm just, they're just going to plus one and kill me. All right, well, we fought in there pretty hard, and then we drew three lands in a row, and it just made it too, too difficult for us to win. I still like the setup. I still think if we didn't mold a five there, we would have been in a great shape. So I'm going to give it another go. All right, I am going to keep this hand. It's a little awkward with the double bulky, but I like the idea of thought seizing plus getting maybe getting something out of their hand with bulky, but not likely. But I just want to be able to at least hurt their hand as they have hurt mine. Ooh, they kept a questionable one. That is an interesting hand that they have decided to keep, to say the least. Well, I'm curious what they drew. Show me what you've got. Faithful Absence, I'm sure. Ah, <laughs> yep. I knew it. I knew it was a Faithful Absence. Ugh, oh, that's so funny. Well, in that case... Ooh. You know what? Screw your Faithful Absence. I'm gonna play it. Not Nixilis. Get wrecked, nerd. Think you're gonna try to kill my Rotting Regisaur in response? Not today, Satan. Minus two, make a one one. And then plus, okay, you're gonna plus one and kill the other one. Yeah, that makes sense. That's fine, that's fine. I still like our position well enough. Because now we get to plus one the Obnixilis. Discard a card or lose two life probably discard a land maybe not all right we're gonna play a rotting regisaur see what they decide to do you can omen of the sea if you feel so inclined let's see what they decide to put on top or bottom but the immediate rip of faithful absence was pretty heartbreaking but kind of funny at the same time all right let's see what they decide to do they've got three cards we don't know about in hand all right play a land Put, put Yorian into your hand, dude. That's what I would like. Don't kill my Rotting Regisaur. Very rude. Goodbye, Valky. I love you very much, but alas. We're just gonna play a fight rigging, see what they do. Likely have a response. Cycle as far as headquarters is not a response that I'm worried about, though. Give me something good. Mm. I actually think a Thought Seize is fine. I'm gonna plus one this. Ping them for two, most likely. Maybe they'll discard a land. Okay. Put a counter on this guy. Cast a Thought Seize on them. See what they've got. Ooh, Settle the Wreckage is probably not something I want them to have. Let's just get in there for nine. See, this feels like some justice. After that game two, they actually have drawn pretty well, realistically. Like, turn two, Fable Absence, turn three, Omen of the Sea. If I had known I was drawing like that, I would have for sure kept their hand as well. Something, something, hitting your land drops is good. Something, something. So, what did they draw now? Maybe they drew another Settle the Wreckage, which would be heartbreaking, but... Let's see. So, let's just plus one here. 
I'm assuming that they're going to either discard one of their... Okay. And then let's just go ahead and... Plus one the Regisaur. Oh no, probably... Uh, I should have done on the Devil. But that's fine. Hit him with for eight. They drew the Wandering Emperor. I was expecting a set of the Wreckage, actually. All right, they're kind of drawing everything that they need. This is kind of getting a little bit silly now. Play a Rotting Regisaur. I was worried about Settle the Wreckage, but realistically, they had a Wandering Emperor. Make a dude, that's fine. Play a Teferi. What are they going to do with the Teferi here? Draw a card, eh? Interesting. Does this hit a Milan drop? Yeah, it hits a Milan drop too. Ooh, this is getting pretty, pretty dicey now. This kind of stopped being justice. Well, this kind of is justice at least. So what do they have? They can... They, another Fateful Absence. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna do this. They're one turn away from a Hallbreaker Horror. So I guess that's not too bad. Let's just put a counter on this guy. Swing everything at their face. See what they do. And now they're dead. Because we're gonna go ahead and... Obnixilis... Sacrificing the Rotting Regisaur. Good game to our opponent. That was a fun one. Because, but then we are going to minus it and make them take seven damage to draw some cards. And that's gonna do it. All right, that was sweet. All right, everybody. What did we think about the deck? Well, I loved it. It was super fun. We did tons of cool stuff. Bone Crusher Giants pulled a lot of work. I didn't love Love Struck Beast. It just... It kind of didn't have a home in that it was a three drop creature that doesn't do fight rigging too well. I'm not really sure. I might actually want to replace it with like three gooses, geese maybe, potentially goosen, and maybe a removal spell or two. I'm not really sure. I just didn't think Love Struck. I was never super excited to have a Love Struck Beast, whereas everything else in the deck felt really exciting. I also think I want to bring in one layer of the Hydra or potentially even a Hive of the Eye Tyrant. For the sideboard, I pretty much loved the whole sideboard. It was pretty pretty great. It did everything we needed to do. Uh, maybe some duresses for the control mirror, control decks. Overall, tons of fun to play. Highly recommend you build this deck. Um, please comment, please subscribe. I'd really, really appreciate it. I've been loving bringing this content for you and I really would just love if you showed me some support by commenting and subscribing because this is something I really, uh, really love doing. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll continue to pioneer explore together in the next one. Bye now.